Hi. In module four, you may want to uh, revise the kink demand curve theory. Um, this is a theory which tries to explain price rigidity, price rigidity, the phenomenon of prices staying, staying the same, staying rigid for some period of time, in oligopolistic markets. Um, the theory was developed in the 1950s by Paul Sweezy from Harvard, and uh, it goes like this. The idea is that uh, oligopolistic firms who are interdependent, they are concerned about their competitors and what their competitors are doing, tend to stay at a fixed price, their product at a fixed price, P. Um, they don't want to raise their price because they understand that at prices above P, they face a very elastic demand curve. And that means if they raise their price a bit, they lose a disproportionately large number of customers. So that's not good. So above price P, it's quite shallow, the demand curve. However, if they were to lower their price, they don't pick up many extra customers because they enter into a price war as their interdependent competitors see they're lowering their price and also low, lower their price. So the demand curve below price P tends to be quite steep, inelastic, and therefore the demand curve is kinked around price P, because they're producing Q, and they have no incentive to either raise or lower their price. So this explains why, the, why an oligopolistic firm doesn't want, doesn't want to change their price, but why might they not have to change their price? Well, for that we need to develop this uh, diagram a little bit. This is of course the average revenue curve as well as the demand curve. And we can draw in the marginal revenue curve which falls twice as steep. Initially, the marginal revenue curve, twice as steep as the upper part of the demand curve, and then the marginal revenue curve does something rather strange. It, it disappears here and it reappears lower down, twice as steep as the rest of this demand curve, something like this. Now why does that discontinuity occur? It only occurs with the kink demand curve. Um, the reason is this. If you, if you imagine just this half of the diagram, it makes sense that the MR curve is twice as steep as the AR curve. Then if you just imagine this half, Again, this is twice as steep as this, and it's as if, if we were to continue this demand curve up, we would see that this is the associated MR curve. So it does make sense. Well, the relevance of this is, is quite simple to understand once we put in the MC curves. If the marginal cost curve, uh, MC1, is, is there, then it makes sense that by profit maximizing, by producing where MC equals MR, they will produce at Q, and price will be P read off the AR curve. But look what happens when costs change. MC can rise, MC2, and it hasn't affected the MCMR position. It's still Q, and therefore price is still P. And that only occurs when the MR curve is effectively vertical. The change in costs has not led to a change in quantity. It's not led to a change in the MCMR position. So, first of all, we established that firms in oligopolistic markets don't want to change their price. There's nothing to be gained from raising or lowering price. But this shows that they might not have to change price, even when costs change. It only occurs in this market. In any other market, a change in MC would move along a non-vertical MR curve, and it would change Q and therefore change P. But in this model, that doesn't happen. So Paul Sweezy suggested that this was an explanation of why we see a lot of price rigidity in oligopolistic markets. I think it's a good theory.